Yo champions, thanks for tuning into this episode of Unleashing Potential, sponsored by our friends at BetterHelp. They provide excellent service for you in the description below, so be sure to check that out and enjoy the episode. Yo champions, this video is going to talk about how my greatest failure made me a better person. I have studied psychology for over a decade and prescribed medications for a living. I will tell you about the lesson I learned from my greatest failure in life. My name's Ryan Long, and this is the Unleashing Potential channel. When I meet new people and tell them what I do for a living working as a PA, people immediately become impressed and start making remarks about how naturally talented and gifted I am. The mistake that people make though is they focus on how successful someone is and don't look at the struggles that the person had. When new people meet me today, they think that I had a smooth, easy road to becoming a prescriber. I will tell you that is not the case. I remember during my fourth and final year of undergrad, I applied for my master's PA program. I applied to about nine competitive programs. I was even fortunate enough to get an interview at my first choice school. I remember being so nervous during the interview and kept thinking to myself how I better not screw it up. I survived the interview, but I got waitlisted. I didn't get any other interviews from any other school, so this one school was my only chance. For months, I sometimes had trouble sleeping at night because I knew if I didn't get into this program this year, then I would have to pay another 1.3 grand in money I didn't have to apply to many different programs because each application was very expensive. And on top of that, I would likely have to travel to many different states to interview. And the worst part of not getting in was that I would have to wait a whole year to reapply and get another shot at getting into grad school. I was told about 50% of people on the wait list actually get into the program since they only put a few people on the list who the program really liked, but were literally only one or two points below the people accepted. I thought about the program every single day, and one day I saw an email from them and immediately opened it. I remember how anxious I was and how my heart was pounding with my eyes glued to the computer screen. The first sentence of the email said, Dear Ryan, we regrettably have to inform you. My heart sank. I felt so sad because I put everything I had into getting a high GPA in school, sacrificing hours of not hanging out with friends and dating so I could go volunteer at different healthcare facilities on the weekends to gain volunteer hours to strengthen my application, spent hours of research looking into schools and preparing for every single possible interview question, and came up short by only an inch. At this point in my life, I was feeling pretty depressed and didn't really want to do anything. I realized though that even though it hurt, I knew that if I didn't do anything to strengthen my application, I would never get to work as a medical provider. So despite how hurt I felt, I picked myself off the floor and immediately became consumed with an obsession to strengthen my application. The next year was devoted to retaking classes I got a B plus in, getting my credentials as an EMT basic and doing basic transport as an ambulance driver, gathering lots of volunteer hours, obsessively studying every night about all the PA programs, shadowing medical providers, rehearsing interview questions, and looking for any crack or crevice I had not looked into before regarding getting into PA school. I reapplied to many more programs this time, borrowing money to pay for the application fee, interviewed in many PA programs in multiple states, got admitted to multiple programs that year, and decided to go to the program that broke my heart and rejected me the year before. This experience taught me though that I could accomplish anything in life as long as I was willing to keep trying after every major failure. This experience taught me that the bigger the success, the bigger the failures and struggles that I may have to go through to accomplish my goal. But when I meet people today for the first time, they don't know anything about the struggles I had or how depressed I became my first year applying to PA school and getting rejected. They don't know how I spent hours retaking human anatomy because my B plus from a high ranking university and undergrad wasn't good enough for getting into PA school. The thing is, every single successful person you see had to go through numerous failures and setbacks to be where they are today. If you want to be successful in life, you need to be resilient and pick yourself off the floor and try again when failure strikes.
And oftentimes, failure will come multiple times on your road to success. And after each failure, you need to keep picking yourself up and taking action, action taker. Otherwise, you will never unleash your full potential. Ask yourself this, you can either try to accomplish your goals and give yourself a chance to succeed, or you can never try and never give yourself a chance. So go out there and take some action, champs, so you can give yourself a chance to succeed in life. This is a follow-up video to Unleashing Potential, Learn to Say No Today. Click above to see. If you learned something new about how my greatest failure made me a better person from today's video, then make sure to subscribe to the Unleashing Potential channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Now, I want to turn it over to you. What new fact did you learn about today? Is it A, you need to keep trying after every failure to be successful, or B, people People only see your success but not the struggle you had to get it. Let me know now by leaving a comment below right now. Click above for the next video and please let me know if you have any video suggestions below.